Mumtaz Kazi is the daughter of a railwayman, and she drives commuter trains on the suburban network. Mumtaz was brought up in a traditional Muslim family, a railway family. And like most railway families, their house was literally right by the side of the tracks. As my father was in railway, we stayed in the railway quarter only. Fast and was running five to six foot from my house. I was watching the train, which was passing very fast. And uh, whistle of the train, that also attracted me. And uh, at that time I thought that I should also become motorman. And I should drive the train. Mumtaz Kazi was studying at university when she saw an ad in the newspaper. That time railway recruitment board advertisement came. In that it was specially mentioned that ladies can apply, but that is, uh, this is hard job for lady. But uh, my father was not allowing. He was saying that uh, you continue with your laboratory technology course. I told my father that uh, uh, you decide. Uh, my father took ad advice from his friends, from relatives, but from everywhere, positive attitude came. And I joined in September 91. Mumtaz became Asia's first woman loco diesel driver and has driven trains all over India. But now she has a family of her own, and she settled into the railway life in Mumbai, driving trains on the suburban network. She lives at Sion Colony, just a few stations from where she grew up. All her immediate family emigrated to Canada, and now her father's retired there too, so Mumtaz is the only member left in Mumbai. And in a few days, her brother is coming from Toronto and she's been asked to find him a suitable wife and arrange his marriage. My uh, younger brother, his name is Firoz Kathawala. He's coming uh, in January. He's coming for the marriage, his marriage. Mumtaz has to find a wife for her brother to get him married in Mumbai and then back to Canada in just eight weeks. After independence, the Constitution of India proclaimed it a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. With 395 articles, it is perhaps the longest and most detailed constitution in the world. The railways were nationalized after independence and remains a state-funded organization with a huge budget, second only to the Ministry of Defense. So the railways celebrate Republic Day with all the pageantry befitting of one of the country's most important national assets. But beneath the ceremony and ritual, the railway still remains quietly committed to all the principles of that constitution. So when Mumbai's population is swelled by a couple of million pilgrims, the railway simply takes it in its stride.
Each year, the city fathers and Indian railways play host to an extra two million rural peoples who invade their city for four days. They are known as the Dalit, the untouchable caste. They are all devotees of Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar, one of the architects of the Indian constitution and champion of the downtrodden poor of India. Before Ambedkar's intervention, the Dalit were virtual slaves. Ambedkar opened up opportunities in education for them, made quotas for government jobs like the railways, and he secured their right to vote. The railway provides these pilgrims with special free travel, and the city gives them a free place to stay. Ambedkar gave them their freedom. For four days and nights they show their respect to the man who himself was born a Dalit, but who died a saint. Mumbai's international airport, Mumtaz and her family are meeting her brother, Feroz, who's just arrived from Canada. He's come in search of a wife. Mumtaz has the responsibility of finding a suitor and marrying him off in the next two months. One bag is in Toronto. In Toronto? Lost luggage. <laughs> Lost luggage. Arranged marriages in India whether Hindu, Muslim, or even Christian, are what most people prefer. Mumtaz and Feroz come from a traditional Muslim background. And although he may now live in Canada, the family believe his suitor is best found in Mumbai. Today, 90% of all marriages in India are arranged. Yet less than 2% ever get divorced. An arranged marriage is a family affair. Not just the joining of husband and wife, but the joining of two extended Indian families. I will look from my point of view like you, but this, I'm taking my sister and brother-in-law, they are also going and they might look, look, uh, look from their point of view. They, they can find out some another feature which I can't. <laughs> so she should be well uh, educated or well, good professional like uh, uh, doctor or uh, MBA or some uh, chartered accountants or some banking professional. It's not in my whole and sole decision, my like, whole family decision is there. So after that, if all, everybody agrees, then it's final. It's like that. I lost my passport, oh my god, but I lost my passport. Oh, he's sure that he didn't put it in the bag that he's lost. Feroz is a product engineer, searching for a bride in Mumbai to take back to Canada. Finding a wife with a good education and a degree is a must for this middle-class Indian boy. No degree, no marriage. In a fast-changing India, education is seen as the only route to a middle-class life, secure and free from poverty. Private schools are full, and colleges and universities are turning out graduates in record numbers. And they're all looking for a job. So whenever vacancies arise, Indian railways are inundated with applications. You can pick up an application form around most stations, and for a few rupees, they'll show you how to fill it in. 